today on Rappler. The Senate approves the 2 trillion peso budget for 2013. The Commission on Elections allowed 79 partyless groups to run in the 2013 polls. And Senate President Enrile says he will vote against the reproductive health bill even if the Senate accepts his amendments. Hello, I'm Maria Ressa. Welcome to Rappler, your social news network. In a vote of 14 to 1, the Senate approves the 2.006 trillion peso budget on third and final reading Wednesday. The budget passes one week after Senate Finance Committee Chairman Senator Franklin Drillon sponsors it in plenary. Drillon says the budget allocates 698.4 billion pesos for social services, including the 44.25 billion peso for the government's poverty alleviation program. Senator Joker Arroyo votes no to the bill, saying the Senate version is similar to the bills proposed by the palace and passed by the House of Representatives in October. Bicameral proceedings to reconcile the versions of the budget bill begin next week. The members of the committee are Senators Drilon, Edgardo Angara, Ralph Recto, Chofisto Gingona III, Alan Peter Cayetano, and Antonio Trillanes IV. Commission on Elections Chair Sixto Brillantes Jr. on Thursday says the poll body will allow only 79 groups to run in the 2013 party list race. Allowed to run in 2013 are controversial groups Gabriela, Anakpawis, Buhay, Anwaray, and gay rights group Angladlad. The approved party list groups comprise less than a third of the original 289 applicants for 2013. Of the 289 applicants, 124 had prior Comelec accreditation, while 165 are new applicants. Despite the reduced number, Brillantes says he is not satisfied and believes the poll body could have done better. Mabuti siguro, we better send a message already na hindi naman biruan itong party list. Sige, mag-apply kayo, okay lang sa amin. Tatanggapin namin yung 10,000 piling pinyo, pero hindi kayo nakakasiguro. Malamang hindi kayo ma-accredit. The Philippine economy grows 7.1% in the third quarter of 2012, with several sectors contributing significantly to this growth. That is the highest growth rate, not just in Southeast Asia, but in Asia. Lala Rimando has the details. From July to September, the world's biggest economies saw a tough quarter. The Philippines grew a stunning 7.1%. It was the second fastest growing Asian economy next to giant China. One time I, I was meeting with the European leader and he asked me to talk about our economy. And he actually paused right, before he made the comment after I, I finished talking about our economy. So in a sense, I didn't want to sound gloating, but I think it was a, really an achievement for our part. President Aquino now has more reason to be proud. The rest of the world is slowing down, but the Philippine economy is on a roll. There's no denying it, the Philippines is having a fantastic year. Next year, uh, we expect uh, to, uh, this, this moment to provide Behind this good news are some of the usual legs of growth and a few surprises. Dollar remittances from millions of Filipinos abroad keeps malls like these full, profitable, and expanding. Aside from consumer goods, migrant workers are buying condominiums and houses. There's also a flurry of construction with a boom in the outsourcing sector, a major dollar earner. In, in, in a way, it's, it's a surprise because it's so large. <laughs> construction is the biggest surprise, growing over 24% after contracting 9% last year when the government held back on infrastructure. Okay. Government economists say it spent almost 54% more this quarter. It also promises to roll out crucial infrastructure in the next three years. What about eradicating poverty? We need to grow an average of 6.7% a year for the next 15 years to increase Filipinos' incomes. Key to that is a strong peso. If the peso is appreciating, it reduces, first it reduces the importation power of uh, our versus uh, uh, our OFW's earnings. Uh, second, it will make our uh, uh, exports less competitive. While the growth has yet to trickle down to the ordinary Filipino, some already feel the impact, 
investing in capital markets, or real estate assets. Who would have known, just two years ago, the Philippines was a basket case. Now, it's one of the top five growing economies in the world. Lala Rimando, Rappler, Manila. A veteran real estate consultant, Lindsay Orr, says the increasing interest in the residential sector is helping drive the booming real estate industry. Real estate is a key contributor to the 7.1% growth of the Philippine economy in the third quarter. Orr says there's an increasing demand for residential condominiums from the BPO sector. Everywhere you look, you, as you know, you see high-rise residential condos going up. Uh, we have uh, an increasing workforce employed in the BPO sector with uh, a, a larger amount of spendable income and uh, these smaller units, these 25 square meter plus units are quite affordable to the new uh, middle manager class that's emerging. Or adds remittances from overseas Filipino workers are helping purchase the smaller residential units. Mm. Units mm. are the OFWs getting uh, buying those twenty five thousand uh, twenty five square meter units or well, locals? Uh, they're certainly contributing into it because the remittances that they send back are, are some of them are being uh, used to buy these small units. Okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, the idea of having a condo in the heart of the CBD, and if you're lucky enough, a, a small house and lot out in the in the province where the family live is, is probably not a bad idea. No, no. That's an ideal scenario, isn't it? Well, government officials say the Philippines' strong economic showing is because of the Aquino administration's good governance-based economic program. The Asian Development Bank's chief, Assistant Chief Economist Sin Young Park says that for the growth to trickle down to the public, the government needs to address the problems of education and infrastructure. And what does this high growth rate mean for Filipinos? Does it trickle down? Eventually it will. <laughs> Where would that all the yes. you know, income go? New income uh, is being generated. The yes. uh, key would be, in fact, the uh, education and infrastructure. Uh, as of now, the Philippines has not been uh, successful in tackling uh, poverty and then uh, income inequality despite right. relatively high growth over the past uh, several years already uh, so the you know you do need to really see why it's not uh, linking to the job creation why isn't it linking to you know the income of uh, each and every household in the Philippines right well, Senate President Juan Ponce Enrile says he will vote against the reproductive health bill even if his amendments are accepted. Enrile says he will introduce amendments to show he is not delaying the passage of the bill. Among his proposed changes is to remove the phrase population and development from the bill. Speaking earlier about the economy, Enrile adds he is also against the RH bill because overseas Filipino workers are the country's biggest export. Ang pinakamalaking uh, export natin is OFW. Export yan eh. Export side yan. Oh, kaya ako, kontra ako sa RH dahil dyan. Ang magpapalago ng bansa natin ay uh, yung uh, excess population natin na uh, sinanay natin na uh, tumatanggap ng mga trabaho uh, abroad that uh, others do not want to handle. We have to accept that. Well, the widow of slain Palawan broadcaster Jerry Ortega says the murder case against the Reyes brothers stands. On Monday, the Court of Appeals rejected the second investigating panel that filed the charges against former Palawan Governor Joel Reyes and his brother, Coron Mayor Mario Reyes. A first panel cleared them of the charges. Patria Gloria Orte Ortega says the murder case, Patricia Gloria Ortega says the murder case is still pending in Palawan and the arrest warrant is still in effect. The Reyes brothers fled to Vietnam days before the warrant was issued. Uh, pa po ang kaso. Ang kaso po ay nasa regional trial court. Hindi pa po nawawala ang warrant of arrest. Meron pa pong pabuya na dalawang milyon sa bawat ulo na nagtatanggong magkapatid na Reyes. Police say the U.S. Embassy and the Federal Bureau of Investigation are not conducting a parallel investigation of the killing of a U.S. diplomat spouse. Makati Police Chief Senior Superintendent Manuel Lukban explains two officials from the U.S. Diplomatic Security Service are in the Philippines to gather information for a State Department report. 
their purpose in going here at first is to personally thank the Makati Police Station. We were able to firstly arrest the person or the suspect. Second, we are able to produce evidence that make that can make the case strong. And it is in this regard that we're able to file a case of murder against the suspect. The police says the DSS officials also asked to meet Jose Ramel Saavedra, the Rockwell security guard who witnessed the stabbing incident Saturday morning. Dr. Jose Cabrera, father of one of the four suspects, believes the U.S. Embassy is trying to influence the Department of Justice. The U.S. Embassy is trying to influence the Department of Justice to reverse the ruling to murder what constitutes murder premeditated plan. They did not even know this service man. There is no murder, there is not even a homicide, because he was not part of this, uh, no, because there was some planning. Alukban downplays the claim and says the CCTV footage is enough evidence to support the murder charges filed against the suspects. Well, let's now look at Rappler's Rap for today, a list of the 10 most important events around the world you shouldn't miss. At number three, Egypt's top court suspends its sessions, announcing a strike to protest Mohamed Morsi's expanded powers. In response, Wednesday, Egypt's Muslim Brotherhood calls for a rally to support the Egyptian president slated for Saturday. Analysts warn this uncertainty will impact Egypt's economy. A day earlier, protesters poured into the streets to denounce a move they claimed was dictatorial. It was the largest protest since Morsi was elected in June. At number four, Syrian media reports two car bombs explode in a suburban residential area of Damascus Wednesday, killing at least 45 people and injuring 120. Syrian state television blames the attack on terrorists. Analysts say the twin attacks bore the hallmarks of al-Qaeda-affiliated groups. Twin bombs, one designed to explode first and draw people out, followed by a second explosion that often causes more casualties. At number six, Sea levels are rising at an average of 3.2 millimeters per year. At this rate, the sea will rise around a full meter by the end of the century. The United Nations Climate Panel says massive number of people living in sea level areas will lose homes, land, and livelihood, resulting in millions of climate refugees. Analysts add this could lead to resource wars and conflicts. And at number eight, Thai Prime Minister Yingluck Shinavatra easily survives a no-confidence vote engineered by her opponents in parliament. Thailand's first female premier, Ying Lak, won 308 out of the 467 votes, securing support even from outside her coalition. Opposition accuses her of failing to crack down on corruption and of being the puppet of her brother, former Prime Minister Thaksin Shinawat. Thaksin was ousted by royalist generals in a coup in 2006. He lives abroad to avoid a jail sentence for corruption charges. Thaksin says the charges are politically motivated. For the full top 10, visit Rappler.com's The Rap. Every story on Rappler has its own mood meter, which gives you eight emotions to choose from. Click how you feel and your vote comes down to the mood navigator in the middle of the front page. It crowdsources the mood of the day, also gives you the top 10 stories that have gotten the most vote on their mood meter. If we take a look today, it's largely yellow and green, Christmas colors. Um, one that stands out is in blue. We have the Catholic Church recommends Breaking Dawn 2, netizens react, 67% amused, 27% annoyed. By far the story that's gotten the most number of, of uh, votes on the mood meter, these are related. The Philippine grows 7.1% in third quarter, the highest in ASEAN. This one includes 31st day, um, 31st high for, this, for the stock market. Um, and if you see here, 85% happy. In this one, 77% happy, all this contributing to the mood of the day. Today, most people are happy. Well, that's Rappler's newscast for Thursday, November 29, 2012. Visit Rappler.com and watch our newscast Monday to Friday. Tell us how you feel on our mood meter and help us crowdsource the mood of the day. I'm Maria Ressa. As we say at Rappler, tomorrow begins today.